This is just a quick um, video describing the nodes and antinodes of various situations with standing waves. What it really comes down to is if we have a closed end, that's going to have to be a node. And if we have an open end, that is going to have to be an antinode. And an antinode means it's going to be at the very top or at the very bottom of the wave function. And I'll draw that in just a second. So we have three kind of core situations with tubes. Um, if we have a uh, wave on a string, so like a guitar string would be closed on both ends because it's held down on both sides. If you had a um, jump rope that one end was free to move, um, you could have a closed open end. Uh, but the idea is still the same. So I'm not going to go through all the frequencies, and I'm not going to write down any equations because I don't want to use different notation than what you might be seeing. But the idea here is the simplest possible wave would be one that looks like this, where we see from the top to the bottom of um, the wave. And I'm going to use two different colors to really highlight the fact that every time we see one of these bumps, a node to a node, that's half of a wavelength because what we really want to be seeing um, to have a full wave is when it goes um, down and up all the way through, and that would be a full wavelength. And if in this case we look, we see that we have a node here in the middle and an antinode in between. Um, if you start to look at these too much, you're going to start to hear the um, Batman, <laughs> Batman theme. For um, a tube closed on one end, uh, so first of all, a tube closed on both ends, a lot of people think, when could that possibly be the case? But if you're in a fairly um, square room, like a lot of classrooms, uh, that, that really is functionally a tube closed on both ends uh, for sound waves. You tend not to get standing waves in that situation, but you could. For a tube closed on one end, we have to reach the antinode, and the first possible way to do that looks really boring. Um, we just have a small quarter of a wavelength. So we get to the very top, kind of like right here. We get to the very top of the um, full wavelength, and then we just run out of, run out of room. We hit the edge. But what we can also do is we can have a full up and down and then we get to this part with the second antinode and so what we have and it's a little bit harder to see is we have this node and this is poorly drawn um, we have this antinode and we end up with three quarters of a wave and that's allowed on the tube closed on one end also so one quarter three quarters five quarters and so on you're going to get like this odd portion of a wave because you can't get it closed again because it's a different type of instrument. The most common thing uh, we use when we're describing these would be organ pipes, which are closed on one end but open at the top, and that's what you can get um, for those. And then for the tube open on both ends, um, I think flutes are probably the easiest one to think of uh, where they, they are open on both ends. You have to have an antinode on both of these which means you are going to have to have at least one node here in the middle to be able to get from an antinode to an antinode. And in some ways, the amount of wave you get to see is the same as the top situation. Um, you just are seeing a different portion of the wave. So that would be the simplest one that we could make. It's half of a wavelength. You kind of get the the second quarter and the third quarter of what we would think of as a wave. I'll draw one more, but again, I'm not trying to go through all of the examples that you might see. But you can get um, a node, and then an antinode, and then a node, and then an antinode, just like that. So let me draw that. And so we label them. This was the node, the antinode, and the node. And so you'll see that what we what we end up with 
in the top and the bottom, we basically get back to our starting point, which means we get a full wavelength here. And if I drew the next example, we would have one and a half wavelengths, and then two full wavelengths, and then two and a half, and so on. So the tube closed on one end is kind of the odd one out here, um, because you, you can't get an even number of wavelengths because your starting and ending conditions are different from each other. So there's, there's plenty of great uh, resources out there with, with fancier um, graphics, but this is one that I, I think is just going to be useful for this starting point.